The previous quick start showed an ASP.NET Core application with user authentication. But what if this application wants to access a protected API? OpenID Connect and OAuth combine elegantly. You can achieve both user authentication and API access in a single exchange with the identity provider. You'll see how to do that in this quick start. I'm Roland Guit for Duende Software, the company behind Identity Server. We're starting with a solution as we left it at the end of the previous quick start about interactive applications. It contains the Identity Server project and Web Client, the ASP.NET Core Razor Pages project, which interacts with the identity provider to log users in. In the quick start client credentials, we already introduced an API with a client, which was a console application. The goal of this video is to let the web client access the API too. For that to work, it needs two tokens from the identity provider. Where earlier just the identity token was needed, containing the user's claims, we now also need an access token, which has two functions. It acts as the key to unlock the API, and it also contains user claims, at least the subject ID, so the API can know who the user is too. When it's time to access the API, the access token will be sent along with a request, and it will be the API's job to verify it. To make this happen, some small changes have to be made in the configuration. First, the client configuration on the identity provider has to be adjusted. In addition to the identity scopes, the client has to be allowed to request API 1. That was the API scope we defined earlier. In the configuration of the OpenID Connect handler on the client itself, we have to actually request the scope. Requesting this API scope will result in an access token being returned for API 1. Now how is the access token used by the client? Let's add a new Razor page to the web client called Call API and define a simple string field in its model that is displayed in the markup. In the onGet method, the access token first has to be retrieved. It's part of the user session because of the save tokens is true setting. Using the get token async method on HTTP context, passing in access underscore token, we can get to it. After that, an HTTP client can be created to do the request to the API. The access token must be sent along with the request in the authorization header. Since that header is not exclusively used for access tokens, we have to indicate what type of authorization is used. Bearer lets the API know we have included the bearer access token. After that, we can do the request as normal, using the getStringAsync method, for example, on the client instance. We expect JSON back, which is parsed and formatted with these lines of code. And finally, we assign the formatted JSON to the JSON field, so that it will be displayed. A menu item pointing to the new page could come in handy, so we are adding that to underscore layout.cshtml. To try things out, make sure identity server, API and web client projects are running and try the new menu item. The data coming back from the API is visible, so the API successfully received and verified the access token and returned the result. And that's it for this video. Hope it helps. See you in the next one.